We welcome you to our worship service this morning from Gordon Street Christian Church this second Sunday of Advent. We thank you for worshiping with us. We hope that at some point you will be able to come and worship with us in person in this sanctuary. In the way of announcements, uh, this coming Sunday, December the 11th, the choir will be presenting its choir music. Uh, that will be at the 11 o'clock worship service. Uh, it will not be on this service that is pre-recorded, uh, but we will have it in person here in the sanctuary. We will be having uh, some instrumentalists to come in and, and join with us uh, for that music. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, also, uh, on December the 18th, uh, pipes on, Christmas Pipes on Parade uh, will take place here in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That'll be a Sunday afternoon, and we welcome everyone to come and be a part of that. And anyone who wishes to donate to our uh, instrumentalist fund, you're welcome to do so. That helps us to bring in these instrumentalists who uh, help us with the music and, and add so much to it. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship is from the 72nd Psalm, verses 18 through 19. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Our hymn of praise is number 129, Lift up your heads, O mighty gates. and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer. Lord, help us be reminded by even the smallest signs that you have the power and the love to dispel the deepest darkness, to bring life out of death, and to establish justice and righteousness throughout all the world. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. And then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Today, we relight the candle of hope. Now, we light the candle for the second Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. From the prophet Isaiah, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we gather here with joy in our hearts, with anticipation of the coming of our Lord. We look around us at the world and we see that you have blessed us beyond measure. Our own sins have caused great problems in our world. There is death and destruction. There are so many things that you never intended for us to have to endure. We have found that through repentance of sin and through turning to you and finding strength from you, that we can do better in our lives but often we have not, and we ask for your forgiveness. We also have found that in spite of our best efforts, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot deliver ourselves from, from bondage to evil. And so we anticipate a Savior. We look forward to your gift of life, 
we look forward to your coming into our world and bringing with you the power of love, the power of, of life and light. We thank you for that gift. And during this season of Advent, we are longingly looking forward to that time. And it gives us hope in the midst of all of the evils of this world. It gives us hope that things will in time be better so that we can endure until that time knowing that with you nothing is impossible. With you we can be delivered. With you justice and righteousness can reign throughout all your creation. And so we give you thanks and praise and worship this day. We pray for those who are anticipating surgery, that you will be with them and bless them, that you will be with their doctors, their nurses, and all who work with them. May their surgeries be successful, and may your healing touch be upon them, that they will heal quickly and be strengthened soon. Bless those who are recovering from surgery, and those who are sick, we ask your presence and your healing touch upon them. In all circumstances of life, may they know the joy of your love and presence that no circumstance can take from them. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, especially those who have lost loved ones needlessly to violence, who are grieving these terrible incidents. We pray that your presence and spirit will strengthen them during these days and will give them comfort. Help us as your people to reach out in whatever ways you've enabled us to do so that we might be instruments of grace and comfort to them from you as well. O oh Lord, we thank you for your holy word and pray that you will grant us insight and understanding of it, that we might learn more of your ways and that we might be more faithful in following your ways. Bless us that we might bear witness to all the world of your love and saving power. We pray that your church in this place and in every place will be faithful in bearing witness to the world that you have loved all people, that you have come among us, that you have offered to us the gifts of life and blessing and even salvation. And so we pray that hearts everywhere will be prepared to receive your message and will turn unto you and find life that is blessed and eternal. We pray for our nation and all nations during these difficult days. Grant the leaders of nations wisdom and grant them the willingness to follow the wisdom that you give, the knowledge that you give. Grant them the courage to do what is right and to lead the nations toward righteousness and justice for all. And now, o Lord, be with all of us. Search our hearts and minds and fulfill our deepest needs in accordance with your will. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our scripture text for this morning comes from, again, from Isaiah's prophecy, the 11th chapter, beginning in the first verse. And going through the tenth verse, listen for the word of the Lord. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, 
The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. Our text again today comes from the prophet Isaiah. We hear from Isaiah quite often during Advent and Christmas seasons. Isaiah was a prophet long before the New Testament period whose eyes were opened to the truth. Isaiah was one who had the courage to speak the word that God gave to him. He had eyes that could see with clarity what was going on in the world. He was not one of those who was following after a dream. He was following the words of the Lord of all creation. He was not afraid to speak in the face of evil he was not afraid to call sin, sin. He was not afraid to warn people that unless they repent, their sins' consequences would fall upon them and would be devastating to them. Because he looked around and he could see the result of sin. He could see the unrighteousness. He could see the injustice. He could see the suffering in the world that was caused by people's sins. And so he warned them time and time again. But he also was one who was able to see beyond the sin of the people. He knew that if people repented and he called them to repent, then the consequences of their sin might not be so bad. But as has always been in the history of the world, people have proven that sometimes they just cannot resist temptation. Sometimes their hearts just refuse to change. Sometimes, in spite of their best efforts, they still fall into temptation and sin anyway. And after a while, the warning from God comes to pass, and the consequences of their sin finds them out. And the result is destruction and death upon the earth. The result is suffering and misery upon the earth among God's people and all things. And we see that in our world today. Many of the problems that we face in our world today are problems that we have caused. We cannot blame those problems on somebody else. They're blamed on all of us because of our sins. Because of the sin of humanity, there are some people who are suffering because of the sins of others. They are suffering sometimes. And God looks upon that and he says, oppression will cease, justice will come, righteousness will reign. But we have not seen that time as yet. 
But Isaiah, in, the sp in spite of all that he saw that was so evil and so destructive in the world, he knew the power of God. He knew the promises of God. And so he shared those promises also with the people so that when the time came that they were in misery and death and destruction was all around, he was able to let them know that God would not let that be the last word. Even with tiny little signs that seemed as nothing, he was able to see the power of God at work, able to see how God could take the very worst that could happen in the world and bring forth life and light and blessing. Our scripture begins this morning, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. The nation had already experienced great devastation and in his mind's eye, in this vision that God gave to him, he saw the destruction of a great forest as if it had been burned down or cut down. And everything seemed lifeless. It was just a devastated landscape of dead stumps. And what in the world could come of that? What in the world could God do with that? What in the world would the people do with that? And they saw that as their nation in devastation, in destruction, and it seemed to them as if there was no hope for the future. There was nothing left upon which to build, nothing left upon which to have any hope. But Isaiah saw this vision. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. A shoot out of what seemed to be a dead stump. People looking upon that would have probably thought, this will not amount to much. This little shoot in this old stump, this old stump is worthless. All it is good for is a place for the insects to hide and feed and as it deteriorates and rots away. And yet Isaiah saw a little shoot coming out of that stump. And with that tiny little sign, he could see beyond that the vision that God had given to him that something great was going to come and take the place of all that devastation. A branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The dynasty of David had failed. The kings had not been able to guide Israel in the ways of God. The kings had not been able to defend their own people, to provide for them safety and security and life. They had failed. And yet Isaiah, with this tiny little shoot coming out of this dead stump, was able to realize a message from God that the end is not yet. The end has not come upon my people because I am able, God says, to raise up among them one who will have the very spirit, my very spirit upon them. And they will have a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He will have that spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. In other words, one would come among them from God who would bring knowledge and wisdom, who would bring compassion, who would have the might to cause the end of, of wickedness, who would have the ability to bring hope to the people, to provide for the people like a shepherd provides for his sheep. This one would have the very wisdom and spirit of God so that he would know right from wrong. He would be able to judge in righteousness regardless of what appeared in his eyes. Sometimes we see things and we think 
things are a certain way because of what we see. Just like when they saw that devastated forest that they thought the end had come. But he can see beyond what we normally see with our human eyes. He could reason beyond what we normally hear with our ears. He could discern the truth of God. And with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. In other words, he would be a righteous judge. He would be one who cared for those who were in need. He would be one who would provide justice for all. He would be one who would treat everyone as equal. Everyone could be assured that his way with them was right and righteous. With the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. In other words, wickedness could not stand against him. And notice it is not with a sword, not with prison, not with punishment, but with his very words. He destroys what is wicked. He vanquishes that which is wicked, so that the righteousness shall shine forth. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. And if you think all that seems impossible, that God would send one among us who had the very spirit and knowledge of God, who had the power of God to bring forth righteousness and life regardless Then listen to what he says next. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. These beasts, these deadly beasts, these ferocious beasts would be ferocious no longer. Even a little defenseless child could lead them. And they would be at peace together. The cow and the bear shall graze. The young shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. Isaiah is seeing a vision of life as God intended it from the very beginning. He is seeing a vision of people and beasts being so transformed that all is righteousness, all is goodness in the land. Everyone is safe, everyone is secure, everyone has enough. Everyone is at peace. Peace. How many people in our world really know peace? And I'm not talking about just the peace of not being at war. There have been times in our history when we were not warring with some other country. There have been times when that was true and yet people were still anxious, still afraid because of violence in the land, because of economic insecurity because of one thing or another. That is not the peace of God. But Isaiah foresees a time when the peace of God will extend throughout creation among all the beasts that he created among human beings, a peace where no one is afraid where they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, he said. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, not just human beings, but all creation will be in awe of the glory of God and the knowledge of God. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people, and the nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This one who comes forth from this stump of Jesse, this dead stump, this one 
who appears as a shoot in Isaiah's eyes, a shoot that seems so insignificant will become the greatest in all creation. This one will be in David's line, and all nations will look, will look unto him for wisdom and guidance. All nations will look unto him for righteousness and love and peace and whatever it is they find needful in their lives and there they will find relief and his dwelling shall be glorious. During this Advent season, during all the struggles that are going on in the world around us, this word of Isaiah was a word not just for the people of Israel. It is a word from God to us we see warfare on the earth we see violence we pe see people who are starving to death in spite of the fact that in the world there's enough food to satisfy everyone we see trouble in families we see trouble in in minds and hearts of people we see people who are not at peace even though they're not at war with others around them. We see a world in which it seems impossible that things can be made better. And yet Isaiah's vision is also for us that the sins that we commit, we may face the consequences of them. If we persist in them, we surely will. The consequences are all around us every day. And yet, when we have done our best and still fail, when we find that it is impossible for us to live according to all that we know we should live by, when we have failed miserably and destruction and death is all around Remember Isaiah's vision of that little shoot that becomes so great because Isaiah knew the presence and power of God and we should know the presence and power of God too that this future which is promised to us, a future toward which we can look and hope, a future that gives us strength to endure the present time, is not dependent upon us as much as it is upon God. And the God who created all things through the speaking of his word, the God who brought forth life for all things, who breathed into us the very breath of life, the God who came to us in Jesus Christ, the God who showed us a love that was willing to lay down his life in terrible suffering and then able to take it up again. The one who is able to take the worst that can happen and bring forth blessing from it. He is the one in, in whom we find hope. He is the one through whom we will find life because in the deepest darkness he will pierce it with his light. In the face of death he will bring forth life from the dead. He is the one who is able to do what to us seems impossible. So in this Advent season our eyes are lifted to our Lord. Our eyes are lifted to him in hope and in anticipation of a world that will be blessed because God has said so and so we can count on it. Thanks be to God.
When we come to the table of the Lord, we are reminded of how great our God is, how strong His love for us really is. Because at this table, we partake of bread that reminds us of His body given for us. We partake of a cup which reminds us of His blood shed for us. We come to a table and remember that we crucified our Lord. We come to a table and remember that our Lord, who lay dead in a tomb, by the power of God's love, came back to us in resurrection. At this table... Our Lord is with us, inviting us who crucified him to come and dine. At this table, we find our sins forgiven by the gracious love of our Lord. At this table, we find ourselves united with people all across the world and throughout ages of time who have listened for the call of Christ and who have come to his table and who share around this table even as we do. We are united with them. We have not earned a spot at this table No one has earned a spot at this table. And yet Christ set the table at the cost of his life and invited you and me and all people to come. So as we partake, may we give thanks for a God who is able to bring life out of death for a God whose love includes all, for a God who is able to take things even that seem hopeless and bring out of them glory for himself and for all his people. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to this table, we remember what we did to you, We remember how you yielded yourself to us and took in your own body our hostility. You took in your own body the pain of our sin. You tasted death for us all. Forgive us, we pray. We thank you for inviting us to this table as if we were a part of your own family, which you have called us to be. As we partake, we pray that we will be cleansed of unrighteousness, that we will be strengthened against temptation, that we will be inspired by your Holy Spirit to share your love one with another and with all people. May we become all you want us to be. And we thank you for your gracious gift, the gift of your own life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And in a like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we are gathered at this table, you have shown us a vision of your glory. You have shown us the power of your love. You've assured us by your own resurrection that because you live, we shall live also. At your table, we have been given a vision that the world can be all that you want it to be in spite of how things appear now. Help us to have faith in that vision and in you. Help us to know that regardless of what we endure in this world, the time will come when your righteousness, your justice, and your goodness will be known in all the earth and nothing will hurt or destroy anymore in all your holy mountain. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.